Coming up in this FinCast, a fish that's easy, smart, pretty, and you can pretty much keep it in any size tank. This food, Extreme, we do feed in the store um, exclusively to all the African cichlids. Uh, we do flake food for the tropical fish. Uh, we do a lot of different um, scrapers and the catfish love them. When you look at the fish, they're very, very healthy, very vibrant in color, a lot of activity, swimming, and that is all a nutritional need that um, is fulfilled by this product. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about the gold ram cichlid as we continue our species profiles and we take a look at what I call cichlid adventures because there's a lot of people who love cichlids and this is absolutely one of my favorite fish. I'm glancing over because I'm looking at them right now. Um, this is a sort of a back to basics fish. This is a fish that anybody can do in their home aquarium pretty much no matter your level of uh, sophistication or experience in the hobby. It's just, this is an easy fish, it's a small fish, it only grows probably to be about two inches long in an aquarium and, and uh, that would be fairly rare to see one much bigger than that. Uh, it's a non-aggressive fish, you can keep it with others and I'll show you the fish that I'm keeping it with in my aquarium here today. I think you'll be surprised at the variety. Or if you've been around the hobby very long, you know that cichlids are kind of more of a thinking fish. They pause, they think, they're, they're kind of pondering every different situation as opposed to tetras, what I would refer to as sort of swimmy fish that just sort of swim around the tank. Uh, I don't want to call it aimlessly because I'm sure there's a purpose to it, but cichlids, in my mind, are thinking fish, and therefore that makes them a little bit more interesting, and I think that's honestly why they're so popular. Just real quick before I get into it, I got to show off my new digs. This is this is actually where I've recorded a lot of my fin casts over the years. But I took the opportunity to take some of the photos that I've taken. You may know that I write for New York Pets Magazine, and that comes out uh, several times a year. And and so I do spend a fair amount of time doing photography. And if you take a look, here is a gallery that I've created with some canvas prints from some of the photos that I've taken over the years. And I'll find different ways in my little office here to incorporate those. And then over here, over my right. Shoulder, I have a desktop jellyfish cylinder from Jellyfish Art, and I'll be setting that up and showing you an unboxing on that, and that'll be a part of my background here uh, for the next little bit as well. So I'm very happy with everything that I've got going on in my office, and I hope it makes a nice backdrop for fincasters and makes my, my videos a little bit more enjoyable for you. So let me tell you a little bit more about the gold ram cichlid. So first of all, you need to know that the gold ram is a naturally occurring morph of the ram cichlid. And and it's so that it is actually found naturally this way. It's said, of course, it's they breed them for the gold ones, uh, but these do occur naturally. They're from the uh, Amazon River uh, waterways in Venezuela and Colombia. I don't, most people, I don't know if you think that's interesting or not, but I do. Uh, this is an easy fish to feed. It'll eat flakes, it'll eat pellets, most of your common frozen foods uh, that you would feed other fish, uh, your brine shrimp, uh, your blood worms, that type of thing. It does like lots of hiding spaces. If you put it in a tank that doesn't have a lot of hiding spaces or has more fish than has hiding spaces, this is a fish that will be kind of fluttering up in the corners and will be very unhappy, it'll be stressed, and you'll be susceptible to ick and other common diseases. So you want to give it plenty of hiding spaces. If you like plants and driftwood, that sort of thing, that's perfect, of course. If you like flower pots and captain ships, that'll work. They don't care, uh, but they do need lots of hiding places. The males will be slightly slightly larger than the females. In my case, I believe that I have one male and two females. I haven't seen or noticed any breeding activity, but I do have one that is slightly larger than the other two. This is a fish that will like its temperatures, typically for South and Central America in the high 70s and low 80s, so say 78 to 82, but it'll do fine uh, in the certainly in the mid 70s, uh, which is about where I keep my tank. And then a pH of 6 to 7.5, so that's a broad range and shouldn't be a problem. And if you measure hardness, especially if you have a planted tank, we're talking about general hardness here, GH as opposed to KH, look for something around 6 to 14. 
Now you heard me mention that one of the best things about the gold ram is the number of types of fish that you can keep it with and it's very rare really to find a cichlid, even a dwarf cichlid that does well in a regular community tank but because of the water parameters that this fish likes which are pretty common and fairly neutral and right down the middle and because it's not aggressive but it can hold its own you literally can keep it in a true community aquarium and it will reward you if you do. I want to show you my own fish tank and give you a broad range of the fish that I keep it with. First of all, uh, I keep it with these delicate thread fin rainbow fish from Australia. Uh, this is a beautiful fish. It's obviously a very delicate fish with those long fins. No trouble, no aggression with the gold ram. I also keep it with rummy nose tetras, which are also from South America, a little bit more native to the gold ram's waters. Uh, that's a beautiful schooling fish. Uh, and again, no trouble there. In fact, the, 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 uh, the little tetras are in many cases as big or longer than the gold rams. Uh, and then in, in this aquarium, I've also got three gentle giants. You've heard me mention my geophagus before, and these are about a four inch long fish. Also a cichlid, uh, no aggression problems, uh, and that's more on the geophagus problem than the rams. I don't think the rams would be picking on the geophagus too much, but they get along just fine is the point. I have a huge lace cat in there, which is a Tanganyikan catfish. Uh, probably uh, you would not think of that fish in this fish tank. I put it in there, it was very small, it's grown up, it seems happy, and again, uh, no issues with, with hostility there. Uh, among the cichlids. Uh, and then I have two other pairs of, uh, of dwarf cichlids in the tank. I have two curviceps and I have two nanochromus. And all of these fish get along famously in my 55 gallon tank. The other nice thing about this fish is it's commonly available. Most of your local fish stores, even a lot of the big box stores, this is a fish that you can buy. It should cost between, at the most, between $5 and $10 a piece, uh, probably even less than that. So uh, it's not a fish that uh, is going to be difficult to find, and it really is beautiful in the aquarium. That's all for this Cichlid Adventure FinCast. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll tell you what, if you like cichlids, check out my playlist on cichlid adventures because I've got lots of profiles of African cichlids on there, Central and South American cichlids, flower horns, uh, a lot of information out there. So there's a lot there for, for people who love cichlids, and I know there's a lot of you out there. In fact, I follow a lot of you on Instagram. Find me if you just search FinCasters, and I'll be sure to follow you back. Also, I've started my series on the planted shrimp aquarium. We're up to uh, uh, four parts already on that, and there will be more coming. So look for that, a planted shrimp aquarium. We're using a new product from Seachem's Aquavitro Labs called Aquasolum as a substrate, and that's going very well, and that is a beautiful option if you're looking for something new in aquarium keeping. And then reef keepers. Uh, I've got my 120 reef, and if you've been following along, we've been adding some automation bits to that as the year goes on because... I've pretty much decided I'm not the guy that can remember to dose every day and to do whatever I need to do in terms of testing, so I'm trying to stay ahead of it. Manage my automation a little bit more than, um, than just the aquarium itself, and that's going pretty well. I've got some nice coral growth and some very happy fish in that tank as well. And if there's anything else you're looking for, I do interviews with people who are leaders in this hobby. Uh, we talk a little bit about aquariums and the environment, and it's all at fincasters.com, so just search for fincasters.com, and you'll see that there, and I've got a growing blog as well. Maybe you can read that and help me move it around and share it a little bit. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.